Uh, we've got PM Satish. He is the award-winning sound designer. He has worked across 30 feature films and 120 documentaries shot in various formats for broadcasters around the world, including BBC, NFB in Canada, uh, Channel 4 UK, National Geographic, and the Indian Foundation for the Arts. He most recently created the sound design for Bahubali, the beginning and the conclusion. Uh, please welcome PM. And thank you again to all of our esteemed panelists and to all of you who, who are here today. Um, you know, as Karina said, Bombay Ruse is an absolutely breathtaking, hand-painted animation by an award-winning film team, many of whom are joining us today. We're so thrilled to be giving you this sneak peek of insight ahead of its North American premiere today. Um, it is based on Gitanjali's award-winning short true love story, uh, which was selected in competition at Cannes Critics Week in 2014. I am really excited to talk to everyone on the team. We're going to be touching on everything from the artistry of artisanal animation, the possibilities of global reach in animation storytelling in the global marketplace. Satish, I might throw to you. I'd love to hear a little bit about the fact that you were the sound engineer on the original short film. Uh, so how did that come about? How did you get involved with that short film project? And what made you know that you had to make the feature? Also, we really would love to hear about the Foley in London and how you made that sound like Bombay. In Paris, in Paris excuse me. I have known Gidanjali for the last 15 years or 15, 20 years. We are really close friends. So my involvement uh, uh, in the film uh, goes from pre-production when she was writing the script. You know, she'll come to us and discuss things in detail and then we go back and forth. Um, I have done uh, two or three films, earlier films of Gitanjali, and particularly the short film, uh, True Love Story. So we have a methodology, how to go about sound, and uh, usually we, uh, she asks us to um, create sounds uh, for sequences independent of uh, anything without any discussion, and then we get into uh, um, you know, work. My, mine is a small team. I have a co-sound designer, Manoj Goswami, and uh, four or five editors. Um, True Love Story did not have uh, any budget, actually. So, uh, so we had to find um, uh, off-peak hours in the studio and um, you know, work a little bit here and there. So it went on for a month or so. And then we did not have money to mix. So, um, so without a proper mix, we sent, uh, without any mix, actually, we designed the sound and sent it to, for the um, Bombay uh, International Film Festival. And uh, she won uh, the best film award over there. So that brought in some kind of money. And then we went to a mixing room <laughs> and <laughs> mixed the film. And it was selected for Khan's. And um, so we could send a proper mixed version to Khan. So this is how we have worked before. All her earlier films, short films, you know, there was, it's all just uh, drawn by her, and uh, we did the sound. Um, so because of that, we have a, a, a clear understanding of things. And uh, once we design sound, uh, uh, she will step in, and then we will have elaborate uh, discussion on that. And then we re-edit or work around things, um, uh, which I really find uh, uh, interesting uh, way of working and uh, sometimes very specific. So the most important thing is uh, um, Gitanjali is open to very many, any new ideas that we come up you know, with. Sometimes even we are not sure whether this would work, and uh, then we would just tell her that you know, it's not something that we really like, but we just wanted to see your reaction. But she is just open to anything new, and that really encourages us to come up with things. Uh, which is not the case. Most of the time, uh, directors would uh, be very pretty strong about certain things, and they would uh, uh, tell us that, you know, let's do this way, you know, before even uh, having a version of ours, you know. Uh, so this, I really love working with her, uh, this aspect that, you know, we could really come up with anything, and then there would be a discussion on that, and then we can alter or, you know. Um, so that openness is, in, is, is truly incredible. Um, then we stepped, stepped into this feature length, which is um, not just a, a longer length, uh, because we couldn't really uh, sustain the film with uh, the usual um, sounds that we have used in the shorter version. And we had to uh, really multi-layer it. And then we had the budget to go to France to do Foley. And <laughs> um, it's quite expensive in comparison to Indian Foley. 
and um, going to going abroad we normally go to go to europe to do foley because they have better studios and better equipment um, technically it's uh, far superior uh, than what we get in India, because uh, not that it, in India it's, we are not capable of doing that. It's just that there's hardly any budget for Foley kind of thing. Um, so people are not really doing the right job over there. So we decided, uh, like any other film where there's budget, you know, we can uh, afford a European um, studio and artist. So we went uh, to Paris. Uh, and they have booked uh, one of the best uh, studios over there and um, a young Foley artist. But then as we start doing, we realize that um, we have a film with a very specific uh, India-oriented, culturally Indian uh, film. And uh, the way of doing things on the street, poor people, you know, and the French Foley artists often uh, unable to understand even, you know, what we are asking him to do. I mean, for instance, uh, in India, when, we, uh, when people cycle, you know, bicycles, you know, we pedal halfway, you know, many, many times when you have to slow down and, you know, in city, cities and uh, towns, you know, you have a very peculiar way of pedaling. And uh, I would ask the Frenchman to do in that specific way, and he just wouldn't understand. He thought it's just bullshit, you know. But and even, even the sound of the bike, do you remember, I, I got a panicked phone call from Satish in Paris, and he said, even the sound of the bike is wrong. So the sound of a bike is very particular in India, the kind of bike that we wanted, the kind of bus that we wanted, the kind of bangle that is on her wrist that we wanted. And so it, it's, not the sa it's just not the same if you've been to India, if you've been to Bombay, you hear those sounds. And we wanted our audience to be in those authentic places. So we then talked. We <laughs> we had to borrow bangles from uh, Charlotte and uh, yes. um, glass bangles because the Foley artists would think that, you know, glass bangles, what is the equivalent closest material? So he would uh, bring some ceramic uh, cup holders, broken cup holders, and he would make, and by looking at that, I know, oh my God, I mean, what is he <laughs> going to create with this? But he says, oh, no, 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 I can handle it, I can handle it. So I have to let him try. But I, I was dead sure there's no connection, glass bangles and ceramic uh, handles. I'm like, they don't. Uh, but uh, poor man, he was really trying to help us, you know, get the right stuff. And then uh, finally I said, no, it's nowhere near. And then uh, Charlotte uh, brought uh, her own collection of Indian bangles. Uh, glass bangles, then the Foley artist wouldn't want to break it because he said, oh, no, it's my, our producer's bangles. <laughs> <you know?" laughs> so uh, I said, we have to break it and I will replace it. Don't worry. I mean, it's really cheap. You know, glass bangles are the cheapest of bangles. And um, he still wouldn't do it. You know, he would just hit two bangles uh, each other <laughs> to create a breaking sound. And I said, no, I mean, this is nowhere near what we want. And then I broke a couple of bangles just like that, you know. And I said, now see the sound, how it, how it sounds, and just go ahead and do it. So uh, it's all cultural. And uh, we had a tough time, actually, uh, getting the right uh, uh, sound. So then we shifted to another part of the film, where there's an Anglo-Indian lady uh, doing her, her own thing. So the, I happily asked the Foley artist to do anything and everything related to that, because that's more like his field, you know. Uh, what they culturally, it's, I'm sure they can, he can relate to that. Um, so it was quite an experience. Uh, and I realized, you know, it's not about the technically uh, how well equipped the studio is or the artist uh, can create synchronized sounds, but it's when it's cultural, you know, it's better to uh, do it back home. And half the things we shifted back to Bombay, and I happily got uh, things done. I mean, like even for a cycle bell, we have a in India, people have a, a way of you know uh, ringing that bell, cycle bell, you know. So uh, I can't make somebody understand how that is, and I had the language problem, and I was just panicking, and, and I made calls to the para, saying that you know, oh my God, I mean, this is not going to work because um, uh, there's this uh, engineer who could speak a little bit of English, but when you have to communicate in artistic language you really need to have a grip of uh, the language. And so he can just translate the basics. Finally, uh, Charlotte so came. Half of the work in front of and the the producer, I mean, nowhere the producer is sitting next to me and translating things. <laughs> 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 I, I was feeling very bad, but you know, that's how finally it worked.
Yeah. Well, if each of you could just speak a little bit about working in the animation space, and I don't know, Satish, if you work exclusively in the animation space or also on live action, maybe we'll start with you. In terms of sound, whether it's an animation or live uh, action, it's not really much of a difference. It's just that we don't have any sound uh, from location, so we have to create from like the entire soundscape. Um, but for this film, uh, it was um, quite different because uh, mostly atmospheric sound is what uh, we were counting on, and there's no not not much music in the film, which are. Um, composed uh, to enhance uh, emotions. Uh, most of the music that we used are source music. You know, there's always source shown, um, uh, and uh, 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 so the uh, the role, conventional role of music. You know, we had to do that with sound. So just imagine there's this romance happening across the road, and there's so much traffic in Bombay, and we need to really figure out what are the sound elements that we are going to. Um, count on to, to create this, um, these emotions like love, longing, and frustration, uh, desperation, struggle in Bombay. Um, so we used uh, sea, sounds of sea, which is just the whole story is happening by the side of the sea, uh, for Salim, uh, the, the, the guy, um, and uh, for the girl, we used uh, sounds of uh, uh, mountainscapes and um, uh, wind, um, palatial spaces, jewelries, whenever she gets into um, dream spaces, and then Salim's dream spaces um, are in, uh, related to Kashmir um, and the kinds of sounds that you have over there. And then the street sounds, uh, which are like, there's this popular Juhu beach, that's uh, the pretext in the film, like the backdrop. And the sounds we started separating from there to uh, to have the right emotion, you know, and then uh, the, the vendors' sounds, vendors' calls, flute, uh, sellers, um, and various kinds of sellers, you know, and uh, sugarcane uh, juice machines, which will always have um, uh, various kinds of bells tied to it. So th these are the things that we have processed and used as romantic sounds. Um, so it's quite unique for this film. This is not how we normally design sounds, and we use the technology like um, Atmos, Dolby Atmos, to create these things to envelop the uh, uh, hall uh, with sounds um, rather than, um, you know, um, lots of effects which are like action-oriented and things like that. There's hardly any kind of action in the film except what you've seen, some fight that was happening, a one and only action sequence. <laughs> so um, uh, so it, wa it was quite different because everything has to be created, uh, had to be created with atmospheric sounds and, uh, uh, and to uh, effectively use uh, to enhance emotions. You know, that's very uh, different from any other films that we've done. I just want to say it's really great getting your perspective, and I think it really speaks to what Tanjali said in the video about the importance and her commitment to having South Asian animators and South Asian sound engineers work on this film, and that's why it does have this specificity and authenticity, and so that really comes through.